Lindsay on Gears. Time to talk the world of Formula One. Uh, uh, let's, should we go through the questions first? I think we should do that. Avikash sends a very peculiar question. Um, are, are we going to see a new world champ? Red Bull using new alternator. Very interesting question there, uh, Avikash. The thing is, Red Bull do have a slight reliability problem when it comes to this... Um, alternator that they're using which is supplied by Magnetti Marelli now a lot of people will sit there and think oh it's an Italian conspiracy because Magnetti Marelli is made in Italy and they will want to do something um, uh, negative uh, for for uh, you know what well, to help Ferrari which is not the truth by any stretch of the imagination and the pure reason is is that 80% of the teams in Formula One use Magnetti Marelli so um, they, the, the difference is, is that the way that the alternator is used by Red Bull seems to be a little bit different in terms of its configuration to, or, uh, as opposed to some of the other teams. So maybe it just gets a little bit too hot or something like that. But it is a concern and it is something that will play on their minds during the course of this uh, weekend. That's for sure. So hopefully that uh, answers your question there, sir. Um, I'm just trying to see. Uh, oh, it's all about the the um, the weather. We'll talk about the weather uh, again. Uh, Johnny O asked the question: Will Red Bull ever not win the constructors' championship ever again? Well, I don't. I wouldn't put money on that. I think they are strong enough to uh, do well to win as many times as they would like to and as long as they've got that uh, dream team together the likes of adrian new and sebastian vettel and christian horner then uh, it could well be possible that uh, they could dominate the sport for a good few years to come this is a very good question from susan no more jody i think she's uh, schizophrenic don't know what her name is she's this is a very uh, technical question what impact does curs using curs and drs have on fuel now very good uh, very good question first of all let's deal with curs curs is a kinetic uh, energy recovery system and basically what it does um, the kinetic energy as it is moving when the car breaks it stores that kinetic energy and puts it into like a reservoir if you you could say um, into like a battery pack and then from there it gives the car extra power when it is needed now, that curves is only allowed to be used uh, for six seconds per lap. You don't have to use it six seconds continuously, but you can only use it uh, for six seconds on every lap. And at the end of every lap, from the energy that has been um, uh, saved uh, through the braking, um, it, it recharges itself and it gives you a full element of curves at uh, the beginning of each lap, which is equivalent of about 80 horsepower in terms of uh, power. The DRS is the drag reduction system, which is basically opening and closing the rear wing flap, which lessens the drag, which makes you, which allows you to go faster. And they can be used in, in uh, combination, curves and DRS, on a long straight in a designated area in the race, which will allow the car that is following to get into the slipstream, have um, a much uh, faster uh, overshoot and be able to pass the car in front of them. So the question is, do, do they have an effect on the fuel? Yes, they do have an effect on the fuel, but the one sort of counterbalances the other one, which is uh, quite peculiar. Kurs, um, although it's not using fuel to charge itself, when you push that button, uh, will give you instant power, but that power, of course, will, um, will be negated by fuel use because you're now all of a sudden going faster and there's more fuel going into the uh, injectors, through the injectors. On the other side, with DR, DRS, if the DRS is open, um, th this allows you to have less drag, which uh, uses less fuel. So the one sort of counterbalances the other, but I think by using curves, you will use more fuel, um, and you're only restricted to DRS. So uh, they do sort of balance each other, but I think by using curves, you are using a little bit uh, more fuel than in general. All right, so those are some of the questions that I've uh, answered for you. Thanks for uh, sending them through. Let's have a look at this coming weekend. You've got to love this. Tomorrow... The uh, Thursday press conference, which will take place at uh, 1 o'clock Greenwich Mean Time. So it'll be 3 o'clock our time. Listen to this for a um, 
gaggle of Formula Oneers. Fernando Alonso, this is all in the same press conference from Ferrari. Lewis Hamilton from McLaren. Felipe Massa from Ferrari. Michael Schumacher from Mercedes. Bruno Senna from Williams. And Sebastian Vettel from Red Bull. The two, of course, br- excuse me, Brazilian drivers there. And then you've got Sebastian Vettel, Hamilton, and Alonso. The top three, you've got to say, in Formula One at the moment. Vettel and, ha- and Alonso fighting for the title. And then the great Michael Schumacher um, will, uh, I suppose, say his final words before he completes, uh, competes in his final Grand Prix in uh, the history of Formula One. Second time he's retiring, but um, uh, let's hope that he has a great, great uh, weekend. Um, having a look at how Vettel and uh, Alonso can win this championship, I mentioned it yesterday, but we'll go through the permutations as well a- a- again. Sebastian Vettel can win his third straight championship this weekend by finishing in the top four, finishing fifth, sixth or seventh, provided Alonso fails to win the race, finishing eighth or ninth and Alonso ending up third or lower, finishing tenth or beyond and Alonso failing to secure a top three place. Alonso can uh, win the championship if he wins the race, provided Vettel is fifth or lower, finishes second with Vettel finishing eighth or lower, finishes third if Vettel finishes tenth or scores no points those are the permutations basically Alonso if he finishes fourth loses the championship that's a simple way of putting it um, for this uh, this Grand Prix you got to say it is advantage Vettel most probably a 70% chance that he will uh, win this Grand Prix this coming weekend the uh, weather prediction I think um, you know people are making a lot out of what the weather can do during the course of this weekend we know that it does rain in uh, in uh, Brazil quite regularly but in uh, wet conditions or raining conditions it's not a question of that Fernando Alonso is better than Sebastian Vettel it's just that the Ferrari in wet conditions seems to be as good if not maybe a little bit better than the likes of the Red Bull in wet conditions Fernando Alonso has uh, driven a very difficult car through the whole season at no stage during this uh, campaign has the Ferrari been the quickest car no matter what race it has been whereas Vettel uh, and the Red Bull team have shown that they are by far the quickest car in Formula 1. Lewis Hamilton and McLaren have shown that it's most probably the second or first, maybe caught up to Red Bull now, quickest car in Formula 1. And uh, Alonso and his Ferrari round about uh, third together with Lotus at this stage. So if the weather is inclement in terms of that it's wet conditions and they race in the rain or a drying track, then Alonso most probably has a better chance of um, you know really pushing Sebastian. Sebastian Vettel for the title. Sebastian Vettel on the other side uh, knows that in dry conditions he should walk this championship but will have reliability issues to consider and also has most probably the most complicated Formula 1 driver in Fernando Alonso um, as his title rival. If it was anybody else in the grid you could sit there and say Vettel's got his number but Alonso just never gives up and you never know um, you know what uh, he comes up in terms of his game plan. It sets itself for a magnificent uh, phenomenon this coming weekend there are a couple of other things in the world of Formula 1 that are a little bit worrying at uh, the moment one of them is the financial uh, status of the Lotus team as we all seen uh, lying third or fourth in the championship uh, in the constructors which is a very good position they've also got Kimi Raikkonen who will, should finish third in the championship as well the problem is is that they don't seem to be having any money and there's been reports that have come out from uh, a Finnish the Finnish press that have said that um, the likes of Kimi Raikkonen as well as the 490 other th- uh, 493 other employees have not been paid for quite a while and the report says that uh, Lotus are awaiting their latest installment of commercial income from uh, the, of course the sports owners and that's headed by uh, Bernie Eccleston so things not looking great for the Lotus concern at the moment. I do. I would only wish that Renault would come back. They are, it's basically a Renault team, but Renault would come back and uh, race as Renault again because we'd hate to see Lotus all of a sudden not signing the likes of Romain Grosjean because they're looking for a paid driver and all of a sudden their development next year doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, become forthcoming and unfortunately leaves them uh, dwindling down the uh, timesheets as well. So a little bit worrying there for the likes of Lotus. That's 
that's a look at uh, Formula One. If anything else does uh, crop up in the next uh, couple of hours, I will, of course, uh, bring it to you. But press conferences uh, start, uh, well, that's this afternoon, sorry, at 3 o'clock, not tomorrow, because today is Thursday. And, of course, uh, free practice starts tomorrow um, in the afternoon, but I'll keep you updated during uh, tomorrow's show as to when those free practices are. This is a race you do not want to miss. At the next intersection, turn on Gears with Sasha Martinengo. Weekdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Central African time.